Crossfire X is the newest title in the Crossfire series, a Counter-Strike inspired shooter franchise with massive popularity in Asia. Crossfire X is decidedly different from previous entries however, with single player campaigns courtesy of Remedy, the studio responsible for Alan Wake, Quantum Break, and Control. While Crossfire X's multiplayer runs on Unreal Engine 4, the Remedy developed single player runs on the Northlight game engine and has a rather striking visual presentation. It's very reminiscent of Control, with realistic ambient shading, materials, and atmospherics. Northlight's excellent RT reflections have been implemented here as well, to great effect. So how does Crossfire X's single player hold up across the consoles? Has Remedy delivered another visually stunning title? Getting into the Crossfire X single player is a little bit complicated. Firstly, the game is an Xbox exclusive, at least in the West. It's available in China as part of Crossfire HD, a China exclusive PC game, but there are no announced plans to release it for PC elsewhere. You'll need an Xbox Series or Xbox One console to play for now. The multiplayer game itself is free, though each campaign costs $10 US or your regional currency equivalent. There are two available campaigns, Catalyst and Spectre. The Catalyst campaign also comes free with a Game Pass subscription. After installing the game, you'll need to activate and download the campaigns, which clock in at a bit over 20 gigabytes each. The campaigns have their own splash screens and load in a little bit awkwardly, presumably a product of the engine split between single player and multiplayer. Once you do manage to start playing, the Crossfire X single player is a relatively basic first person shooter that doesn't seem like a typical Remedy title. The plot is on the simple side and the gunplay is rather basic, feeling a bit like an old school run and gun FPS game. There are some distinctive bits of Remedy flair, like the use of FMV footage of real actors, surreal narrative sequences that blend hallucinations with reality, and cinematic slow motion gameplay effects, but this is a surprisingly conventional game on the whole. Plus, the shooting mechanics feel a little clunky sometimes, and the enemy AI is quite rudimentary. Visually though, this is a real treat. Indoor scenes have a very three-dimensional look, with detailed baked GI, a heavy use of volumetrics, and high-quality, accurate-looking ambient occlusion. Crossfire X has beautifully realized indoor environments with a moody visual tone, just like Control. Light tends to flood and bounce around rooms coming in from exterior windows or sparsely mounted light fixtures, creating dramatic scenes. Outdoor areas look excellent as well. Long lines of sight are surprisingly well realized, with some nice looking vistas and plenty of detail at a distance. Geometric density and surface detail can be a little lacking up close, however. Plus, the actual playable areas are a bit on the smaller side, just like outdoor areas in prior Northlight titles. Much of the Remedy cinematic flair is still here, with well-directed, dramatically lit cutscenes that make use of high-quality bokeh depth of field and volumetric effects. This is clearly a lower-budget effort than Remedy's other recent titles, so these scenes are somewhat more limited in number, but the cutscenes that are there look very good. Plus, we see the return of RT reflections. The overall implementation looks similar to Control. Reflections look beautiful and are packed with detail. The reflected world has certainly been simplified somewhat, but shadows are still present in the reflections as well as dynamic objects. Like Control, even semi-matte pipes and walls get RT reflections here. Ray traced reflections are visible on transparent materials too, adding sharp see-through reflections to glass surfaces. The only annoyance with the RT is that this is restricted on consoles to the Xbox Series X, and even still only on the graphics mode on that console. There's no RT whatsoever on Series S. Plus, the world of Crossfire X is rougher and more outdoors focused than the glossy interiors of Control, so many environments in the game don't have very many RT surfaces. This scene really shows off the RT at its best. There are more accurate scattered reflections on the road, detailed sharp reflections in puddles, and good transparency reflections in the car windows. The scene without RT lacks most of this depth, with just a blurry impression of reflected light near the car models. The glossy desk surface in the ray traced version of this scene looks much better as well. If you disable the RT reflections on Series X, 
by turning on the performance mode available on that console. There's still a very good screen space reflections implementation and signed distance fields are present in lieu of cube maps when the screen space data needed for the SSR is occluded. The signed distance fields are very low res, but are perspective correct, with less detail than a cube map, but better alignment to the environment. So the overall visual impression here is very strong. Thankfully, that holds true for every platform, stretching all the way down to the lowly Xbox One S. Visual settings seem fairly evenly matched across the consoles, with the obvious exception of the RT reflections in graphics mode on the Series X. There are some differences in volumetrics and shadow quality across the consoles, but these are fairly minor differences that are easy to overlook outside of direct comparisons. There is a catch, however. On Xbox One S and One X, there's a severe problem with texture streaming. High-res textures sometimes take upwards of 20 seconds to load in, with low-resolution placeholders appearing instead. This applies to opaque textures as well as alpha textures, like the textures used for fire and for grass. It's a highly distracting eyesore during gameplay, and is an issue in cutscenes as well. Other Northlight games have had streaming issues on last-gen consoles, but nothing as bad as this. Crossfire X doesn't seem to be doing anything extraordinary with asset streaming. It's a very linear game with relatively gentle environment transitions, so hopefully this can be addressed in a future patch. There are some other oddities as well. Pausing and unpausing the game disables the motion blur, which has to be manually re-enabled by pausing the game and unchecking and rechecking the motion blur toggle. The player gun model animations seem to hitch and stutter at times, which is a bit off-putting. I encountered a handful of gameplay glitches as well, most notably an issue where controller vibration wouldn't work for the first 10 minutes or so after loading a save. Crossfire X just feels a little bit less polished than it should. Image quality is a bit curious here. Series X renders at a 1440p internal resolution in both its performance and graphics modes, while Series S and One X step down to 1080p. The One S comes in at a native resolution of just 720p. There's no evidence of dynamic resolution, although there is another trick at play. Crossfire X has an implementation of a sort of temporal upsample, similar to the effect in other recent Remedy titles. Quantum Break pioneered this technique nearly six years ago, and the effect here looks fairly similar, for better and for worse. The Series X, One X, and Series S are all upsampling into a 4K grid, with generally good results in static scenes. The Series X produces a fairly 4K-like output, with One X and Series S turning in a softer, but still pleasing image with significantly more detail while standing still than their 1080p base resolution would imply. One S turns its 720p internal res into a competent looking 1080p in stills as well. The trade-off is that there's a lot of image breakup in motion, which is particularly noticeable on the One S. Most edges lose anti-aliasing coverage as soon as you turn the camera or even move forwards and backwards, and much of the image detail is lost as well. In static scenes, there's also quite a lot of pixel popping, which is likely an artifact of the reconstruction process. The results here are reasonable, but I feel are probably a little bit behind the curve relative to more flexible conventional upsampling techniques like Unreal Engine 4's TAAU. The image suffers from distracting degradation in motion, although Series X has a high enough base resolution that these problems are minimized on that console. Performance is a mixed bag as well. Let's start with what works. Series X mostly locks to its frame rate targets. Graphics mode hits a consistent 30 FPS, while performance mode comes in at a solid 60 FPS. I did notice some occasional one-off dropped frames during environmental traversal in the graphics mode, but these aren't generally noticeable during gameplay. Either mode is a good option in the Series X, though I don't feel like the RT reflections are prevalent enough to make the frame rate trade-off worth it in most areas. The other three consoles perform markedly worse. Series S and One X both target 60 FPS, although they both suffer from frequent performance drops into the 50 to 60 FPS range, which are accompanied by tearing in the top part of the screen. Intense combat and outdoor areas tend to provoke these dips. The frame rate is significantly more unstable on Series S, unfortunately, which tends to have around a 5 FPS deficit relative to the One X in similar gameplay, and drops frames more often as well. 
Neither console acquits itself particularly well, although the One X is certainly preferable. One S has some stability issues here too. The frame rate target is cut down on the One S to 30 FPS, which it mostly manages to reach. In some of the game's more intense scenes, the frame rate will drop to the high 20s, which again is paired with tearing in the top margin of the screen. I did notice some larger stutters at times on the One S as well, although these were not very common. Only the Series X really performs well here in my opinion. Although the One X and One S aren't too bad, especially considering their last-gen limitations. Series S really needs a bit of work, however. Like an uncomfortable number of recent titles, Crossfire X fails to reach a consistent performance level on Series S. The resolution target is probably a bit too ambitious for the hardware and should be scaled back. So the final verdict. Crossfire X has very attractive single-player campaigns, with well-realized environments, fast action, and plenty of cinematic flair. Lighting and shadowing are particular high points, and the rendition of indoor spaces is especially impressive. There's also a strong implementation of RT reflections on Series X, which adds a lot of depth to the presentation and even applies to some of the more diffuse surfaces in the game. Image quality and performance concerns do make this a less than stellar showing unfortunately, although Series X mostly powers past these issues. The gameplay perhaps doesn't live up to the fidelity on display either, although I think the game is still worth checking out if you find the visuals appealing. But with that, we've reached the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, and press the bell for notifications for new videos. To view a high quality version of this video, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net, and to get in touch, just use Twitter. That's all for me for now. Thanks for watching.